I'm excited to welcome you to Live Healthy Naturally, a podcast about how to get healthy and stay healthy naturally. I'm Dr. Samya Shredwin. You can find us on all major podcast posts, including Google, Apple, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Hello, everyone. I am so excited. Um, Pretty much today marks the one year anniversary of our podcast. um, And this is just such an exciting thing because when I started out doing podcasts, I really didn't even know what I was going to share and how this was going to go. Um, So many people encouraged me to start the podcast, um, you know, saying that, you know, I have a lot of things to share. But obviously, you know, I'm sure you can relate with this, that most of us don't really think we know that much to share with people. So I kind of had the same impression, but eventually, obviously, you know, we've been doing it for a whole year, so it kind of worked out. But now I am super excited because there is something else that's coming up. You know, in my practice, one of the things that happens is I get to hear the stories of people. It's such an honor and a privilege. And I get to hear not just stories of their current illnesses, but also their previous uh, conditions, things that they have had to deal with, how they dealt with it. And we always ask for a timeline of conditions and what they did to recover from that or resolve that. Because nothing that people suffer from today is just something that appears as it seems to be. There is always, always a reason for why it happens. So which means that we want to kind of understand what has happened over the years and what are the things that they've had. And if certain times old conditions can also contribute to the newer condition. So in those times, whenever I ask people about those kinds of things, people have shared with me all kinds of stories about healing from cancer naturally without chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery. People have healed from heart diseases, from stroke, and uh, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, so on and so forth, even before they came to me. That is one of the reasons why they actually thought that, you know, I would be a good choice for them because they have done it before. And maybe that practitioner left, or maybe they can't find that practice anymore, or maybe they moved. There are so many number of reasons, but they've always had this understanding that natural healing is possible for all kinds of conditions. And that's how they come to me. So as I was talking with one of the patients recently, I realized that, you know, there are so many healing stories. And whenever people come to me with chronic conditions, one thing that they must have is that they must know their body has the ability to heal. And this is so important. If you don't believe that your body can heal, then it doesn't matter what treatment you take. Your body will not be able to heal because your body is trying to go with the identity that you are actually holding on to, the belief system that you're holding on to, and your body will not heal and it will all be a band-aid. And so, but many a times, why don't we have that belief? We don't have that belief because we don't know better. We don't really know that this is possible. We don't know the capabilities of our own bodies. And in that case, what can I actually bring to you that will help you understand that your body can heal? Obviously, I say this all the time that your body can heal, but You might think that that is just my perception, but now I want to bring many different guests to you. People just like you and me, people who have actually had experiences just like you and me, and I've had experiences of many health conditions and not necessarily that they have been treated in my office, but they have been treated by many different practitioners all around the world. And what did their healing story looks like? So I hope that this first anniversary of our podcast, I'm actually moving this podcast into another arena, which is to bring hope, to bring health to you and to everyone that's listening to this. Because, I mean, if we don't have hope, what do we have? And this is a very, very, very important um, work that needs to be done. And uh, I'm extremely excited today because I have an amazing person that I've had the honor of uh, getting to know. She is um, one of the most, um, you know, happy, 
laid back, um, fun spirited person that I know. And as I started doing this, I wanted to kind of start off with people that I know have healed from all kinds of things. And so um, here I'm going to introduce you today to Saraswati. And um, we are going to hear from her about her healing and her journey to healing. Hello, Saraswati. Hi. Thank you for joining me today. I really, really appreciate you coming on as our first guest. Absolutely. I'm very <laughs> excited to be here. I mean, it's uh, it's always, you know, so much fun to be with you. So here today, um, I'm even more excited that, you know, for this first anniversary of our podcast that I get to actually have your story as the first story. Awesome. I am super excited and feeling awesome to be here. Perfect. Okay, then. So tell me a little bit more about your background, Saraswati, for our viewer, I mean, listeners, so that they can have an idea of, um, you know, who you are, as well as what your journey has been up until now. Absolutely. So, um, so again, like, like Swami said, I'm Saraswati. I'm actually, you know, I live in Dallas right now, but I'm actually originally from India. Um, you know, grew up in southern India, tropical country, enjoyed all the nice weather there. Um, as a child, you know, as I grew up, uh, I had a different kind of, I guess, you know, the food, I guess I'm a, I've been a vegetarian, so I've mostly eaten healthy food. I guess except for dairy, I can I couldn't say that anymore, that dairy is healthy, but I did consume dairy at that time. Um, you know, pretty much had a healthy life, you know, there were some times like everybody gets, you know, viral fevers and all of these things. So, but my dad has always been a big fan of homeopathy and, uh, and also Ayurveda. So besides the conventional medicine, um, I've also used a lot of homeopathic remedies as well as uh, Ayurvedic, uh, you know, whatever the stuff, uh, herbs and stuff. And so um, I've had a mixture of all these things, you know, for healing as such. But mm -hmm. uh, for some reason, I've always had more inclination towards natural remedies and homeopathic remedies uh, were my first to go as I grew up and mm -hmm. as well as even after growing up. But I didn't have a resource other than my dad to go to, you know, especially after moving to the U.S., it was more like, okay, I get sick, you know, take Tylenol, take Advil, you know, whatever comes. And then if I'm more sick, then I go to a doctor, which was seldom. Thankfully, I had a very good health where I didn't get sick a lot, uh, even in cold weather, you know, near Chicago. But um, when it was bad, I did go to a doctor. Okay, that's uh, wonderful. I mean, it's uh, always awesome when somebody already has that kind of a background because one of the things that I often see in my practice is that a lot of people want to do better, but they don't know better, right? right. Everybody, when they know better, they'll do better. Right. And what if we don't really have um, those kinds of, uh, you know, understanding? What if we don't have that kind of background? If we don't have that background, then we don't always know what to go to. It's wonderful exactly. that your father, yeah. you know, knew some of these things mm -hmm. and he wasn't a doctor. Is that right? No, that's right. So he was not a doctor, but see, that's the amazing thing about it. And this is one of the things that I like to advocate amongst our, you know, pay people, patients as well as that, that, you know, I want people to actually learn yeah. how to take care of their own families, mm -hmm. at least for acute things. And that is right. the reason why we have all these free resources on Absolutely. our website. Mm -hmm for, you know, all kinds of acute infections and acute uh, conditions that people can treat themselves because what it does is mm -hmm. it kind of helps us become more empowered, right. become better at, you know, doing those kinds of things for our own families and our children yes. learn that, oh, these things work amazingly yeah. well, yes. which means that their body also kind of, you know, is not used to taking a lot of medications right. and learns to heal on its Honestly. own and they start believing in right. their own body's ability to heal, yeah. which is not something, the story that we hear typically, you know, okay. in the outside world. Okay. And here I also want to mention about my own uh, upbringing because, um, you know, my father um, was a homeopathic doctor, so that did help. But the fact is that, you know, I never ever um, really went to a doctor all through my childhood because my father took care of pretty much any of the things and that doesn't that didn't mean that I didn't really have any kind of infections I did have mumps I did have chicken pox I did have um, hepatitis um, you know a but I have had all of these different conditions as well and every single one of them have been treated by my father and through homeopathy which means that you know I'm so proud to say that I have not actually taken any kind of conventional drugs mm -hmm. pretty much all my life except for when they gave me spinal anesthesia for my c-sections 
but even then i actually still um i chose not to take uh, painkillers or antibiotics after my c sections and i just took homeopathy and healed from it and you know which is something that we do in our practice as well so it is wonderful to first of all know that that's possible right because nowadays yeah. people don't even think that's possible yeah. so many people think that you know once you have a child you have to take Correct. the child to the doctor all the time and yeah. keep getting some or the other medication and they're always taking something or the other and that's not how it is no Um and, and how we, often did you have to go to the doctor when you were a kid? Um not often actually it was very less um I did have tonsillitis you know when we were talking about mumps and stuff I can't remember but I used to get those like big chunky mm-hmm. cheeks and the you That know, is mumps throat. correct. Uh-huh. Yeah so I used to get those a lot my uh-huh. tonsils were like swollen mm-hmm. where I used to like get fever and you know like I used to have pain and all that but So when I went to a conventional doctor I believe you know I was little so I didn't know much about it but my parents said that they would take it out uh-huh. and so that that's the only way that I could get rid of them but then because my dad has been a you know homeopathic fan you know he actually took me to a homeopathic doctor oh that is wonderful there. and for a year I believe I used I don't even I think alfalfa probably was one of them I don't remember okay. but there was something that started with a that uh-huh. I used in another one I think I used it for about a year uh-huh. and never ever got back those things ever again oh that is such a so, wonderful story so you're saying that you did not have have your tonsils removed no. even though they were enlarged correct that is an amazing story because yeah. this is something that we see in practice all the time you know yeah. people with enlarged tonsils yeah. you know go and get their uh, tonsils removed or adenoids removed right. and that's one of the things that we treat as well to kind of shrink it right. so it's wonderful that you actually had yeah. that experience back then Absolutely. and it wasn't removed because no. tonsils are extremely important they are supposed yeah. to be there right. because it actually has a role in our immune system it has mm-hmm. a role in protecting us from right. different kinds of foreign bodies including viruses yeah. bacteria pollen right. all kinds of things. Things. so we shouldn't be really removing those things yeah. i am so glad that your yeah. father knew these things yeah. and he was absolutely. able to take care of you yeah. that's wonderful absolutely yeah so what happened after you moved to the united states like you know uh, how many pregnancies and childbirth did you have and how was your experience with that was it actually natural or was it actually medicated uh, what happened So after I moved to the United States I mean like I said I've been pretty healthy and never used to get I mean except for allergies and cold I didn't have much and I used to take those Nyquil, Zequil and all those kind of stuff you know when mm-hmm. initially when I moved in because I was very stuffy at that time right. uh but then you know with pregnancies I've had pretty easy pregnancies as such you know I didn't have any complications or anything um it was a smooth breeze the first delivery uh was with epidural Uh, it was a natural both of them were natural deliveries mm-hmm. but then the first one i took the epidural mm-hmm. and um i was in dilating so it was a long journey you know to get to that point where i had, could deliver the baby but after that i actually was on pain medication mm-hmm. because it was pretty painful being mm-hmm. the first pregnancy and delivery too mm-hmm. and i did take uh, tylenol with nicotine I, i don't even remember the names but mm-hmm. they gave those to me it was with pretty, codeine you mean codeine yeah uh-huh. yeah codeine yes, yes, yeah yes. so they did give those to me and i mm-hmm. used them i think for a few days mm-hmm. even though i was like kind of feeling like oh i have a baby and I'm feeding her and right. I'm taking those things I hope it doesn't affect her mm-hmm. but you know it was so painful the first few days that I I did take it because I didn't know better I didn't right. know what else I could take yes. I didn't have the resource at that time yes. um and isn't it funny though that uh, you know that even though you have been raised that way yeah. at some point in time somehow we actually depart from that right. belief system and we suddenly think that this is not really taken it's not possible it's to take care of this right and so many people even have told me that oh in the united states i didn't know that they were natural doctors and honestly speaking right. it's such a crazy belief though because because we have that belief we don't even right. look we don't look right and i'll tell you my own experience of mm-hmm. it where the reason why i had two c sections which mm-hmm. shouldn't have been the case is because the first time when i actually was pregnant with my daughter i had a perfectly normal pregnancy mm-hmm. no issues whatsoever and i did everything the way it was supposed to be where i actually even um walked 4 miles right before i went into labor yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> i did everything that i could possibly do and there was no reason for me to have a c section yeah. except for the fact that i didn't know that there were midwives i didn't oh, know gosh. that that was actually even possible yeah. and the and uh, you know i believed that oh i have to look at my insurance and i have to choose the doctor right. from underneath that yeah. and not really even look for reviews and obviously right. you know this is also like 15 years ago yeah. so which meant that back then we didn't have google reviews google reviews <laughs> <laughs> to, to <laughs> tell us you know whether this doctor is good or not yeah. and she was just not really a good doctor at all i mean today i feel like wow you know i mean i didn't know better yeah despite studying the right. things that i have studied i didn't know better when it came yeah. to choosing the provider for my you know delivery yeah. and so 
and because she was just not a good doctor, she didn't care. She didn't really check. She didn't come in to even see me or anything. And mm-hmm. so ended up, it ended up being a very long labor. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, and, you know, they just kept giving me Pitocin again, despite, so it's not just you, right. even me who have yeah. had all this knowledge, right. couldn't do anything when it came to my own pregnancy. Yeah. I didn't really choose my advocates properly. Right. I didn't instruct them properly yeah. so that when I am not capable of right. handling it, that somebody so else does it. Yeah. So it is always that way, but mm-hmm. obviously all of those are available right. services now. And that's something that I want to let the listeners know that, you know, there are midwives, there are uh, doulas, there are uh, even, you know, patient advocates. So even if you are in a hospital, you can actually contact some people who are called patient advocates and you can actually tell them to go talk to the doctors, nurses and kind of come up with the kind of treatment plan. There is so much that can be done. So don't ever think that that is the only choice you have. So, yeah. all right. So that's what you did. You yeah. they took painkillers and Pretty things much. like that because you didn't know. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, did you have any kind of uh, uh, health crisis or a health condition that you have experienced since you've been in the United States and uh, you know and what was your experience of that and what happened um so I mean everything else with pregnancies went pretty good um and I've lived a healthy life I've always eaten healthy and everything so I always thought that I'm invincible you know, nobody's gonna come do anything to me nothing is gonna happen to me that's the kind of mindset I've always had mm-hmm. and uh and that's a wonderful mindset to have yes, absolutely. <laughs> but but I took a I took a shot, I mm-hmm, guess, you know, mm-hmm. because even though I was that strong mentally, the one incident that happened, I believe about three years ago, two and a half years ago was I suddenly had hives mm-hmm. that came up, you mm-hmm. know, in my body. And I was actually in New York at that time. As I was traveling back on the day I was supposed to travel back, I just woke up with all these like hives, like, like something bit me, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I went and checked in the bed to see if my son was okay and everything was okay with him. So Mm -hmm. it's like, Oh, it's just me. Mm -hmm. So I didn't understand what was going on. So of course, you know, I knew Dr. Samia by then and I just called her office and asked what I could take. And uh, her assistant actually said, you know, I could take apis milk, but then I was in New York and there's like no sprouts or anything, but there was whole food, but they didn't have the potency that Mm -hmm. I, I was supposed to take at that time. So I took, I went to the Walgreens, got Benadryl. I took that because I wanted to just come back home mm-hmm. and then come see her once I come back. But of course I wouldn't get the appointment the same day. So I have to wait for like the next day or something. So I came in, the highs were just increasing in the body. And then, you know, like pretty much everything was getting kind of puffed up. Um, so I was like, okay, let me just pass this night through. And the next morning I'll call the office and then I'll find out. So you were still in New York at this time before you came. So I know you came to see me. Right. Uh, after you came back to Dallas. Correct. But so when you were in New York, you were actually just at your room, just trying to take Benadryl to help the condition. Is that right? right? Okay. Right. I mean, the day I was traveling back to Dallas uh-huh. is when I, I saw the hypes. Okay. Luckily. Okay. Uh, so that the flight was like in the afternoon. So I took Benadryl. I was sitting in the flight with all these little, little puffy eyes, you know, here and there, you know, hypes in there. And then I came back home. It was like, by the time we came back, it was past five. So mm-hmm. we were already closed by then. So I uh, took Benadryl, I ate something, you know, and then I went to bed. Mm -hmm. The next morning when I woke up, I was literally, I couldn't even open my eyes. I was literally like all puffed Mm -hmm. up, entire body. Mm -hmm. And then I passed out. Oh, wow. Yeah. So when I got up, you know, to probably use the restroom in the morning, you know, I just kind of passed out. And then that's when, you know, my family called the ambulance and Mm -hmm. I went to the hospital. They did. So I was like pretty much like passed out and I just didn't know what was going on. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't open my eyes. I mean, mm-hmm. I could barely like even open, like see anything around. So all I knew was that something happened to me. Mm-hmm. I'm puffed up. I just need to get back to my normal state so mm-hmm. that I can even think better because mm-hmm. I didn't know what was going on. Right. And then I went there. Then they did a lot of tests. They did like Lyme disease tests mm-hmm. because I went to New York. They thought a tick or something bit me. Right. <laughs> right. I probably had Lyme disease. But so you are I'm mostly in downtown New York, right? Not upstate. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you yeah. know, just like Niagara Falls and New York. Right. So I wasn't like going out in the in the woods. Right. So I didn't get any bites or anything. I knew that. And then they just gave me Benadryl and all other kinds of things just to bring my puffiness down. Right. Mm-hmm. So all these things happened for a couple of days. They poked me everywhere on my arms and because, you know, they couldn't find veins and stuff. So I was like poked everywhere. And I was like, just do whatever you want. Just tell me what's going on. That mm-hmm. was the mindset because like nothing is supposed to happen to me. Why did this happen to mm-hmm. me? It was the thing that kept on running in my mind. It's like, mm-hmm. I eat healthy. Mm-hmm. I don't eat anything crap. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one meal that I ate different from my 
family was I ate a salad that night mm-hmm. and then I think then I started noticing mm-hmm. all these hypes and things come up but what could a salad do right, right. it was just lettuce and you were actually eating even healthier than them yes, <laughs> right yes, yeah exactly and here it happens to you yeah mm-hmm. so it kind of I think brought my confidence down mm-hmm. that how can this happen to me right that, that I couldn't get an answer for that I think one of the things that a lot of people actually tell me that as well is that you know I mean I have actually done worse in the past but now I am doing better why is this happening to me right. or uh, you know I mean my entire family does all kinds yeah. of bad things but right. I actually do better <laughs> and why is this happening to me but one right. of the things that I want to actually mention here for our listeners is this that you know our bodies yes there is always a reason for it and I'll come to you know, what we found more and all of that in a minute, but there is always, you know, things that are actually accumulating in our body that we are not aware of as well. And that, you know, even though you may not actually see it immediately outside Mm -hmm. that this is what immediately caused it. You know, if you actually have a good provider, they would be able to help you find that root cause. And that is always something that we need to do, which is to find the root cause of the problem. And uh, it's awesome that you have that attitude that, you know, nothing will get me. I'm invincible. That's a fantastic mindset to have. Uh, but when it does happen, that doesn't mean that our body will actually right. lose itself constantly either. Right. It right. is just to find what has happened. Right. And uh, maybe we did do some things that we are not aware Correct. that was not great for us. Yeah. And so now we actually learn it and we take action and we go on. Yeah. So we don't necessarily lose all of our confidence right. over right. our bodies yes. anymore. Yeah. Yes. But I mean, those two days that I was in the hospital and when they came back saying that every damn test was negative, I think that's what is like... What is going on? It's like, it's just that, that having no answers to what has happened, I think kind of brought me down. I can understand. As such, you know, just the the confusion is like, someone tell me what happened. Yeah. Someone tell me why this happened so that I can do something about it. Right. It's more of that thing. It's like, because I want to know things so I can do something about it rather than find something out when it's like, it's too late. But that's also the reason why, you know, we talk about the tests, right? So many of the blood tests are just a snapshot in real time. Mm -hmm. So they don't necessarily actually show us immediate answers and I have had so many times in my practice where I have patients with all the you know symptoms of hypothyroidism but then their blood work looks normal normal right so and I think in your case too your uh you were actually diagnosed with hypothyroidism right after that weren't you after a few months after that after that yeah yes okay yeah go ahead so so that happened and then you know luckily on Friday when I came back from the hospital Mm -hmm. in the afternoon I got an appointment with you Mm -hmm. and I came you know to see you and you know I was teared up you know when Mm -hmm. I came because I was like I know she's gonna fix me that's all you know when I saw her the moment I saw you I was like you're gonna fix me that's all I had and so it was like I don't know if it was happy tears or sad tears or whatever they were just tears you know I just remember that and I was like so when I came to you and then you started to put me on on whatever protocol you put me on whether it was diet whether Mm -hmm. it was remedies Mm -hmm. and any other cleansing Mm -hmm. detox right It, it just helped me just mentally saying that okay now I'm gonna get well yes what happened, why it happened is a secondary thing. Right. In the next few weeks, I'm just going to get well first. Yes. Then figure out what, what has happened, yes. why it has happened. Yes. So the first few weeks, I gave myself that time of feeling better. You know, mm-hmm. okay, I'm, I'm going to get better. Giving that mental uh, strength to myself that I am going to get better. And then once that's done, that's when we did the thermogram after a few weeks. Because that is correct. I think after six weeks also, I still had some things and you suspected something else was going yes, on. Yes. And that's when you said, let's go do the thermogram. Yes. Which... I also wanted to first kind of give you some time because your body had obviously a histamine reaction. Right. So there was a lot of histamine soaring through your body that right. was creating that. Right. So I kind of wanted your body to settle down. Of course, the most important thing is not um, as much as, okay, you know, getting more of testing then the more important thing is to actually give you relief rather right. than you know you losing confidence in yourself and so which is what uh, you know we're trying to do for the first few weeks and right. after that yes because when obviously any of the blood work came out to be negative and all of the tests right. came out to be negative I knew that it has to be a functional problem right. and not a structural problem and this right. is a very important aspect of it as well because Most people think that, you know, if something is not in your blood, then it's not really a problem. No, that is not the case. Because most diseases are appearing on the organ level or on a tissue level. And they are not really on the blood level unless it's a blood problem. Right. So without looking at the tissues and even when we look at the tissues, if you're only looking for structural problems, as in the case of CT scans, MRIs, CAT scans, yeah. All of these look at structurally. Okay. And when you look at it structurally as well, you are only going to find something if there is a pathological change that change. has taken place, if there is a growth, if there is mm-hmm. an ulcer. Right. 
right. only then right. but it's not going to show you functional problems right. that are happening in that and right. that's where the thermogram is such a fantastic tool Absolutely. it's been amazing uh, you know in finding out so then what happened after the thermogram was so done? The, after the thermogram was done, we figured out a few things, you know, where I think the pineal gland, I guess that's why the thyroid wasn't working, functioning optimally. And then... Was the pituitary? It was a pituitary. It was a pituitary. Sorry, pituitary. not the pineal. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> that's why they have a doctor here. <laughs> so it so was a pituitary. It was a pituitary. Yeah. And then um, there were a few other things that came. Uh, yeah, I heavy metals. I dental, yeah. Yes. The heavy metals. I also had like a mercury... Uh, bridge I guess you know there was yes. mercury in there that I need to get you know removed because of which I think all of the an anaphylactic reaction happened because yes. my body was detoxing constantly like mm -hmm. every second in, in my you know lifetime and I didn't know I didn't know about it right so and that's why when we were talking about how you were eating well and all of that but there were other things other that were done without even realizing that exactly. these are actually right. harmful to us right? Right. right we don't we just go to an expert right. if it's a dentist if it's a dental problem we yeah. go to the dentist and we say okay here you know I just open my mouth yeah. and you know do what you do need what to do <laughs> right exactly. and then yeah. we expect and hope that right. they actually know what they're doing, what they're doing. Right. and it's not just a fix for today but it's yeah. a fix in the long yeah. term as well right and that's what we are hoping to accomplish yeah. but then we have so many different you know times so where they are not they're not doing it intentionally right. Right. they just don't know better but exactly. what they don't know better affects us as well so right. there's things like this that happen so to summarize Saraswati had uh, heavy metals uh, in her tissues and she also had a pituitary problem and she was actually having toxicity in the body and her body was not detoxifying properly. This was actually the most important thing. Over a period of time, the toxins had been building up, but she wasn't able to detoxify as well as it should. Right. When the toxicity limit was actually more than what the body could handle, then it actually created a reaction, an allergic reaction in the body. Right. It could have been triggered by anything. We don't know what exactly triggered it, but mostly... The problem was not just what triggered it. The problem is what was already in there. It's like a volcano ready to erupt. Yeah. All you need is even just a leaf falling into it can actually create that trigger reaction. I, I think the trigger was because I went for an Ayurvedic massage ah. two times. And the, the day I left for New York was the second time I went. So the first time I when I did it, I think I wasn't ready to detox because my lymphatic system was already overburdened yes and i didn't choose the right path for uh -huh. the detox to start yes uh, because you told me this this yes. is how it happened and that is so. the most important thing so m most people though unfortunately when they actually go do something like that and right. something like this happens they will think that it's because of the treatment Correct. but it's not the treatment the right. treatment did not actually do it yeah but because the pathways were not open right. when you are trying to detoxify right. through a treatment yeah. now it is not able to detoxify right. instead it actually erupted through ways that right. it shouldn't be erupt erupting through exactly. so that's what had happened in your case as well right. yes right. right so so i mean those things came up and i think you put me again on a particular diet mm -hmm. and then you know you know several other detox and smoothies and everything and I think a few months later, I think it's all when COVID things started is when even my stress levels were increased, you know, I guess, you know, because I wasn't handling the stress very well, you know, with kids being home and work mm -hmm. and everything else. I think that's when my thyroid took a hit and that's mm -hmm. when the thyroid problem came up. Mm -hmm. uh, and you said it is because of stress because mm -hmm. everything else looks good. It's just yes. the hormone that's kind of, you know, going yes. lower or higher. So then I was put on that. And, you know, after that, I think ever since I think the detox process has been happening and, you know, um, the rest of it also. Now I'm off thyroid, you know, my thyroid is functioning great right now right. after a year or a right. year and a half, I think. Uh, I don't think that we ever put you on any thyroid medication in the sense that you never no, went no. on levothyroxine or Synthroid, any of no, those no, no, things. Not those. Yeah, just right. the remedy. Yes. Yeah. So just everything that. was treated completely Correct. naturally. Yes. And your thyroid, now the thyroid, hypothyroidism, whatever yeah. typically people actually hear. Right. This is one of the reasons why I actually wanted to ask you about that as right. well and this is also the reason why I'm doing the series is because people the moment they hear hypothyroidism for right. example they immediately hear treatment for yes. the rest of their life and Correct. what does a treatment look like synthroid or armor thyroid or right. levothyroxine something like this yeah. all their lifetime right. But in your case, you haven't had to take a single thyroid no. medication, did you? No. no. I didn't even go to a conventional doctor, you know, because you suspected it could have been thyroid. The day I came yes. in to see you because mm -hmm. I was feeling very, like, fatigued mm -hmm. and, you know, I didn't have any energy to, like, I walk a few steps and I go back and, you know, like, lay down on the bed. That's mm -hmm. how less my energy was, mm -hmm. no matter how much I eat. And mm -hmm. then you said it looks like it's thyroid, mm -hmm. but then we didn't do the test. Mm -hmm. You suspected it. And then over the weekend, because I was feeling too tired and, mm -hmm. like, I was almost, like, passing out, I went to the emergency, like, mm -hmm. the, 
uh, urgent care and mm-hmm. uh, they did the mm-hmm. blood work and that's when it came out and I sent you the report and right. you put me on the remedy yes. soon after that yes. and then you know it kind of settled after that mm-hmm. that's exactly I think I was on a thyroid medicine like way back when when probably when I was like 26 mm. or something or even yeah, I guess around 26 after my first child was born um, I went to a, like a doctor, like a regular yearly checkup. And then, you know, she was like, oh, maybe you have thyroid because I think I said maybe my hair was falling or something. Mm-hmm. Like that. And then she's like, oh, let's check your thyroid. And it was like borderline, but then she put me on the medicine for three months. Mm-hmm. And I hated taking that because it's like the first thing in the morning, I would take it and not eat anything for half hour. I'm like, right. I'm hungry when I wake up in the morning <laughs> and I want to eat. So I hated taking that medicine, but I took for three months. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I went back. She's like, oh, it's fine now. But then I was like, do I have to take this now? And she's like, well, it's only borderline. Like, no, I don't want to take it. Let's mm-hmm. see for the another three months mm-hmm. so I did not take it for another three months and then we did the test again and it was still like borderline so it mm-hmm. was fine so I was like thank god I don't have to take this anymore yes but then you know if if I had to ever take and I was also on a cholesterol medicine right at that age uh-huh because at 26 wow yeah, at 26 they okay. put me on I don't even remember the name I know you mentioned that to me yeah once, you know, when statins we, most likely yeah yes so, yeah mm-hmm. so she put me on some mg I don't know how much it was but she put me on that because they were like the triglycerides and my LDL or HDL, whatever, it's, that bad, uh-huh. the bad one. The total was, cholesterol as yeah. well as the LDL was high. Right, mm-hmm. it was high and, and I wasn't exercising as much, so my other one, the good cholesterol was a little low, so she put me on that and I was taking that as like, I'm just 26 mm-hmm. and I'm on a cholesterol medicine at this age. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. I'm right. not taking it. So I stopped taking it mm-hmm. without even mentioning it, but I just didn't like taking it because right. something in me told me this is not the way to go. Right. I just didn't know what was the right way, Right. but I just knew this was not where I wanted to be. Yeah. So I stopped taking that medicine. But, you know, fast forward, you know, like two years ago, you know, we all did all these thermograms and everything. Everything came out good, you mm-hmm. know, except for these few things here mm-hmm. and there. And then we started addressing those. But I do want to emphasize on the thermogram as such in general is because the benefits I see from yeah. from doing that yes. compared to mammogram, from even even blood work, right? Yes. There's no yes. poke. There's nothing in it. It's just like yes. getting temperatures. But yes. the amount of information it gives, that is true. the amount of data it gives for us to do something about anything you have in your body. Yes. It's not just about, oh, I have this problem. Now what do I do with it? Right. It's not like that. You may get this problem in, yes. in the next five years. Do yes. something about it now. Yes. So that's what your thermogram does for you. It's more of a predictive analysis on your body yes. where you can, you know, take action and get better yes. before something hits you hard. Exactly. And I I love that you're saying that it's true because even though we have actually done blood work for you as well after right. that and right. all that. So it's yeah. not that, you know, oh, you know, we don't ever, right. obviously right. we know do we do all of those things to check on things to yeah. make sure that on that level as well, biochemical right. level as well, everything is right. right. And, you know, it has been, you know, you didn't have to, your, your cholesterol, everything is right. very good. Now there's nothing that's concerning right. there. So even on a blood level, it is, but when blood work didn't do anything, the thermogram was actually able to help. And then we also repeated your thermogram recently, didn't we? So wasn't your first thermogram had some uh, possibilities of developing cancer? Didn't it show that in the first thermogram as I remember? Yeah. The first one showed, I think the second one also kind of had got better, Uh but then it still had some stuff. Yes. Um, uh, But then the the recent one that we did, the third one, it showed actually, it showed much more less possibility of it. There are still then things that need to be addressed, but at least the possibility of that has gone down way lower compared to what it was the first time we did. So I was like super excited yes. about it. I think I was excited the first time itself, even to know that there's a possibility of it yeah. and I can do something about it today. Yes. Yes. It's not really just a lot of people actually get nervous when they have to find out because they think, right. oh, this means a diagnosis. Exactly. And a diagnosis means that you have to live with this for the rest of your life. Right. No, it is actually a roadmap to where we are and where right. we need to go. Right. Because most cases, right, mm-hmm. you know, this is as you know it too. Yeah. In your case, everything was fine until right. one day it wasn't. Exactly. And that's just how it happens. Yeah. Most people get diagnosed with diseases one right. not a very fine morning yeah, <laughs> obviously exactly so that's just how it happens yeah. and so why does that happen it's because we don't yeah. really know where our tissues are right. until and we also learn to kind of uh, push a lot of things under the rug yeah if it's not cumbersome if it's right. not really so bothersome so it bothersome. wasn't painful right we learn to push it under the rug and right. so when we keep doing that over yeah. a period of time boom one day something happens yeah and the thermogram has been such an amazing tool Absolutely. in understanding that. Yeah. And even in your case, that's just what actually helped us exactly. find out why you had the hives yes. and what we need to do about it yes. and be able to change mm-hmm. the body yeah. and, you know, everything, the function of it yeah. and remove the heavy metals, yeah. all of those things yeah. over a period of time. Yeah. Obviously, this means that, you know, you have... Yeah 
your health and you know that you have your health. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that was, that was one thing that gave, I think, more confidence in saying that, okay, most of my organs are working fine. The majority, like the major organs are actually working fine. It's just few things that I need to address to make, to bring my health back. And I was actually glad that that happened, that incident, that event of, you know, hospitalization, everything happened because everything has a learning, the positive side to it. Yes. And if I, if that didn't happen to me, I wouldn't have known about the possibility of cancer right. or my, you know, my pituitary gland not working yes. and the metals in my body and yes. all of these things, which because I know about them, I knew about them at that time. I was able to do something. I got it off the, the bridge that had the mercury. I got it replaced with something else. I did whatever I need to do to, you know, get the rest of the health back. No, that's wonderful. And, uh, you know, as you just said, rightly said too, that it is an opportunity to learn. Mm, right. It's not an opportunity to feel betrayed by our body. Correct. It's not an opportunity to right. get upset at our body. It's right. an opportunity for us to learn what is my body trying to tell mm-hmm. us. Absolutely. And that's exactly what you did. Yes. Yes. And I mean, you know, your story is again one of um, very powerful stories because you had all of these things, but you didn't really freak out and immediately say, okay, right. please give me all the drugs in the world <laughs> <laughs> and let me take it every day for the rest of my life. Right. Right. Instead, you actually yeah. chose to heal your body. Yes. Absolutely. And so I really thank you for coming in here today absolutely. and, uh, you my know, <laughs> sharing your story because mm-hmm. I think the more people actually hear stories of um, different people's healing for different conditions, mm-hmm. it actually gives them the confidence to know that yeah. their body too yes. has the same ability. You know, it's not absolutely. like you and I are unicorns in any ways. No, <laughs> so, <laughs> so obviously it means that if I yes. can do it or you can do it, yes. anybody else can do it absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate your time. My pleasure. And uh, hopefully we'll have you soon again for another story. I'll be excited. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye. I know you have things to do and places to be, and you chose to listen to me. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. I am Dr. Samya Sridharan, and it is an absolute honor to be heard by you. I hope you enjoyed and learned something from this episode. Show us some love and share with your friends and family. And be sure to tune in to our next episode in two weeks. Much love and help. Until then.